the David Beckham documentary. Now, this is something I've been ingesting all week. There's been lots of talk on uh, TalkSport. We've had some incredible uh, interviews with the directors as well. If you want to see some of those, go to the YouTube channel, TalkSport, and just type in David Beckham TalkSport, and you can find those. Um, David Beckham, firstly, I just want a real simple answer from both of you. I'm going to ask you uh, first, Kai, and then Pards. David Beckham, world class, yes or no? Yes. Pards? Yeah, of course. This is the question. People are actually divided over the fact whether or not David Beckham was world class or not. Now, Pards, the the, the term world class gets thrown around a lot, doesn't mm. it? What do you identify as a Premier League manager? What is world class? What does that mean? Yeah, well, okay. So there's different versions of uh, what you would call an, uh, the world's greatest player. That's a different subject. But when you're talking about world class, you're talking about a, a, a professional player who's probably in the top three or four in his position yeah I would say uh, and when you look at David Beckham right side midfield set plays work rate defensively um, creative ability uh, 100% world class player world's greatest player no world's best side right sider a world class player on the right side uh, getting any team in the world yes yeah that he could have and um, the one thing that um, um, that you have to remember uh, about uh, David Beckham if you take all the showbiz and everything else out of the way put that all to one side um, and you ask professional players about playing against them uh, David, Be- uh, David Beckham and particularly when Gary Neville was behind him wow that right side was as good as uh, Man United have ever produced um, and that why well, that was why in my book uh, you would class him as world class. Um, on socials of the week, someone on Talksport said um, Bex is just uh, is he any better than James Ward Prowse? Someone said on social media. Well, the fact that Bex played for Real Madrid, Milan, PSG, Manchester United, and LA Galaxy. So just look, look James Ward Prowse is an incredible player. Really, he should have been in England squad for me. But with David Beckham, Kai, you know we talk about big players and big moments. We go back to the the treble winning team in 1999 he scores the goal against Spurs to get them back level at Old yes. Trafford if you remember rightly I recall that and then of course in, in the final of the, uh, the Champions League two of his corners create the problems to get yeah. them to goals Yeah, and that's why I'll back up my talk in terms of being world class because it is big um, big moments in games being prepared to step up take responsibility yeah free kicks corners little little details in games you'll see his name, big stats, assist, goals, work rate, as Pards quite rightly said, um, a really good voice in the changing room, on the pitch, and a likeable guy in the game. Referees loved David Beckham, <laughs> apart from one that <laughs> night. <laughs> but, you know, it, it all he was up. He was Britain's public enemy number one, that referee, for a period. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, in actual fact, he was number two, and the, the oh. real number one was David Beckham. Yeah, he well, was the true. public enemy. So yeah, that brings me on nicely to the next point I want to talk about in the documentary, because in case you haven't seen the documentary yet, spoiler alert, we do talk about, you know, the 98 World Cup. Mm-hmm. I completely forgot in the run-up to that, you know, Beckham was a big part of the England team, but Glenn Hoddle had actually dropped him for the first two games, the game against Tunisia. He dropped him, and then he brought him on as a sub against Romania. And then he obviously scores that wonderful free kick against Colombia in the group stages. And then, obviously, what happens, happens. And in the documentary, Glenn Hoddle is really made out to be the bad guy. Now, me and, obviously, Kai are massive Spurs fans and Glenn Hoddle fans because he is a legend of, of, our, of our club. Um... The the, the the version of events that they try and portray on, on the documentary is that Glenn threw David under the bus because of a, a post-match comment that he said. Because I think one of the interviewers says to Glenn, that's going to cost you dearly. That mistake's cost you. David's mistake's cost you dearly. And he goes, yeah, he's cost us dearly there. And obviously we went out on penalties. David Batty and Paul Lintz missed. You know, obviously this has been edited the way that the Beckhams want this to be portrayed. How do you think Glenn's feeling now? Because he's had a lot of backlash from this part. Well, there's a sort of situation you have as a manager where you um, sometimes you go in press conferences, uh, and I've done it myself, and uh, not said what would be the perfect thing to say. You've said, you know, you're supportive of the player, and yeah, but he's probably cost us today. Uh, just a throwaway line, which you, yeah. you're totally innocent, really. But obviously they grab that and they make it into such, and it's something that you've said. So you can't take it back. You have to kind of live with it. And you, you say about owning it, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to own if you've made a mistake. And um, But 
my defence uh, for the managerial, with my managerial hat on, is that you know his England manager's done a lot of pressure. He's only young, you know, he's only a young man really at the time when he's managing England, and um, you know that that moment might have caught him out in that in that press situation. But but we all know Glenn Hoddle. He's a decent, honest, good man. Now I haven't seen the show, the Beckham show, if I'm honest, so I, I can't comment on how it's been portrayed yeah. or edited, if I'm honest, but. Obviously, uh, they're probably aggrieved. David is aggrieved because at that time, the 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 amount of um, abuse and media uh, over the top reporting about him and his family was awful. What he had to put up with, really, really awful. And you know, uh, any of those things that contributed to that, they're going to be upset about. That's understandable. Absolutely, and uh, before you, when you came on, Kai, obviously you mentioned today's charity was for men's mental health. We, it's been yes. a mental health week this week. Uh-huh. Do you think in, in today's society that we would have seen the same backlash towards David? Because this is one thing you do get from the documentary. He's in a strength to deal with that at that time and to come through it and atone what he did. In his mind, he atoned what he did in 98 in 2001 by scoring that free kick. That's why it brings us on nicely after that being our goal scorer tonight. You know, do you think we've got a better as a press and as a public to try and support our players, you know, when they make mistakes? Or do you think there's, there's still work to be done on that? There is so much work to be done on that. And back then, um, platforms such as your, your Instagrams, Facebook, they weren't around. So in my opinion, I think these days is actually worse with the uh, the backlash and just getting at people direct, yeah. you know. For, for example, you just had a message come through here, direct because of the social media platforms. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, which is a shame, but it comes with the territory of, of sports and the, the competitive nature. And if things don't go your team's way or your nation's way, that's kind of, you're stepping up into a responsibility. It's a shame, you know, it's such a shame, but it's, it's, it's the minority. It's not everybody in yeah. sports, it's just the minority. And he's big, he's bold, he's strong enough. And look at the heights that David Beckham has got to and fair play to his character. He's gone through a lot, a um, lot of adversity. And he's just, he's just an exceptional human being, if you ask me. Absolutely. He's a great role model. If you haven't seen the David Beckham documentary already, make sure you go check it out. It's a, listen, you don't even have to be that interested in football to watch it. It's just a great, you know, four yeah, episodes. Yeah. And for the uh, nostalgia uh, quality, just so many little things that happen. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember that. I remember one, of the, one of the great advances over the last, uh, I would say, three or four years, just talking as a professional sports person and, and coach, is the brilliant sport documentaries that you get now. Yeah. I mean, we used to get one like every two years maybe on the BBC or the ITV. Netflix are banging them out like weekly. Yeah. Some unbelievable stuff on there. And, you know, if you want to learn about professional sport, take yourself to Netflix. Sorry, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, take yourself to Netflix and um, have a look at some of them documentaries. They're top, top draw. Absolutely. And for anyone that's in doubt, if Beckham was world class, you don't play in a midfield with Figo, Makaleli, and Zidane. That's the end of that conversation. Uh, right, Kai, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I thoroughly enjoyed that.